From August 1592 until 1594, London was devastated by the plague. There were 15,000 deaths, one in every 15 of the population, including the Lord Mayor and four aldermen. The theatres were closed for much of this period. And we have the mystery of what Shakespeare was doing. In all probability, he was on tour with his company, performing in small country towns away from London's plague. Some claim that it was now that he made his visit to Italy, to Verona and Venice, where four of his plays are set. The only thing we can be certain of is that during this period he had met his patron, Henry Reathsley, the third Earl of Southampton, a handsome youth of 20, for on the 18th of April, 1593, Shakespeare's writing was published for the first time, his narrative poem, Venus and Adonis, and it was dedicated to the Earl of Southampton. Writing plays was not considered a gentlemanly occupation, but writing poetry was. The Elizabethan aristocrat could manage a sonnet as easily as he could a sword, and Shakespeare's popularity with the university students and the young lawyers of the Inns of Court dates from this poem. We can safely say that Venus and Adonis and his second long poem, The Rape of Lucrece, were the only works ever corrected by Shakespeare himself before publication. They were to be hugely popular. Venus went through 16 editions before 1640, more than any other of Shakespeare's published works during this period. The poem is strongly influenced by Marlowe's Hero and Leander and owes much to Ovid and other classical sources. It tells of Venus's love for the rose-cheeked youth, Adonis. Some have suggested that in his dedication to Venus and Adonis, the phrase, first heir of my invention, marks Shakespeare's debut as a published writer. Others have claimed this implies the poem was first written when he was a youth in Stratford. Whatever the truth may be, here is a vividly drawn picture of the innocence of youth confronted by the sensual maturity of the goddess of love couched in the simple beauty of the Warwickshire countryside. Fondling, she saith, since I have hemmed thee here within the circuit of this ivory pale, I'll be a park, and thou shalt be my dear. Feed where thou wilt, on mountain or in dale. Graze on my lips, and if those hills be dry, stray lower where the pleasant fountains lie.